Oh, you know, it's right there. And I found it. It was in a little, it was just hidden. They had no signs. And uh, so I went in there. Obviously, they, you have paperwork that you have to do uh, to just to verify that, that you are you. So, I mean, they take your fingerprints. They make a picture of you. Uh, you sign some paperwork that your signature is part of that. Wow. And then once all that stuff is done, you go and wait. I would say, uh, if, you know, don't study there. It just makes you more nervous. On that day, you know how it is. If you don't know what you're supposed to know, you're not going to learn it in two hours. It's just the day before going to take the test, do nothing. It is proven by research that I did not conduct that if you don't study the night before the test, you know, you have a about 60% chance to have, 60 between 60 and 69% chance to score higher on a test than if you study the night before. So our recommendation to you, get some popcorn, you know, spend time with the wife, the kids, the husband, uh, you know, get a great movie, relax. You come over here, you come early, go through your, you know, everything that they have to do, your fingerprinting and, and everything, relax, then they're gonna call you. Then uh, before you enter the room, because there's this room and they have alarms, and I mean, I'm telling you, this is like uh, wife's testing on steroids. And then what they do is, you know, I recommend that you go in civilian clothes, don't go in uniform. Why? Because you're gonna have to take your shirt off uh, your uh, ABU shirt, and you have to take a pockets. They have to put their hands in your pockets. They're also going to use. They're also going to use a uh, a metal detector, and they're going to scan you with it before you go into the room. And then you're clear. You sign and you enter the room. You're going to sit down in there, and then what is going to happen is they're going to uh, you're going to test. You know the test is a hundred and. Uh, the 200 questions, 50 questions do not count. You do not know which ones count. Wow. <laughs> so 150 questions count, 50 do not. And you have two hours, I think two, no, two or four hours to, uh, to take the test. And the clock starts and it does not stop. So, for example, for me, it was time, I'm telling you, although I'm young, you know, if I have to use the restroom, you know, at a particular time, I'm like, oh, you know, man, really? <laughs> okay. You know, so I, I say, you know, I was trying to, you know, I can do this. And, oh, 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 I gotta go. So I, I put everything else, and when I went to get out of the room, same procedure. And they go, you put your hands up, they look at your hands, if you have long sleeves, you gotta pull them up, they pad you. But everything, make sure that you did not take anything out of the room, use the restroom, then you come back, look at the camera, it's you, you know, they, they do the whole process again, and then you go back in. During that time, the clock was still stick, ticking. <laughs> so you lost time in there, so I'm not telling you to dehydrate before going in. <laughs> Remember, you need to do that, but just to be conscious that that's what is going to happen. And then, of course, it's electronics. The only way that they do this paper base is if there is some out of the ordinary handicapping situation that they need to. But it's going to be uh, electronic, so CVT type. And so you're going to go through it. Uh, you you'll get you have a pencil, paper, and you're going to have to be making calculations. You're going to have to go through it pretty quickly. Uh, I had few moments to go back you know there's questions that I needed to go back so you mark them you know uh, as uh, non-final and you can go back to those questions but one of the things that I you know that I surprised me is and I was thinking about this for anybody who tries to memorize the steps when it goes to that test that person is going to have problems will probably not pass and the reason for it is because these are not memory questions you have to know what you're supposed to be doing. You know, uh, you're looking at plan value, your critical path, and everything. And, and so you have a scenario. You're calculating all of those things, but you're answering the questions. And if you 
if you just memorize and you can't put things together, then then you do not understand and you're not going to pass. Anyways, uh, I did a little prayer before going to the room because you know at the end I put my hands together like this and I was done and I was going to push the button and say it uh, ready. Thinking, uh, well, help me here. <laughs> you know, I pushed and then started going through you know uh, the different areas that they are you're being tested on. You know, uh, uh, process so and so proficient. Uh, you know, marginal, marginal. You know, in proficient, proficient, proficient. I like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah! Not good, not good, not good, not good! Okay, well, I wonder what's gonna happen. Pass! Oh! So I passed the test, and then, uh, so, it, said, it tells you the instructions, you can leave the room. You leave the room, and then the person, the prometric person, it give you a little uh, paper saying that you passed. And it tells you your whole scores. Do not lose that paper! <laughs> if you know, that's your only proof! As of right now, well, obviously they have the other uh, biometric data that you were in the room, but this is the only proof that you passed the test. So once you get back, that's so what we're going through here, what happens the day after, maybe the day, the day off, once you pass, you know, celebrate. Celebrate like you have, you know, don't get in trouble, but just celebrate. You know, do good things, you know, hug the kids, the spouse or whatever, feel good about it. And then go back to the PMI and then tell them you pass and there is a code in there and you enter that code and and then you're going to wait and tell you and actually as a matter of fact uh, they'll send you a message saying uh, congratulations you have passed and here's the electronic certificate uh, your license number is this and so you can then use the PMP uh, letters after your name and you can also have you can also use your license number and then what they do is they register you in the license. Uh, so what happens is, let's say that you are doing consulting work, and somebody want to verify that you are a really a PMP. They go to that to the uh, PMI, uh, Project Management Institute, and they check. They put they put your license number or your name, and it says you know, Jose Lugo Santiago license number so and so. Good till this day. You know, uh, so that's why that is important. And then uh, about a month later, uh, so you get this certificate. It's pretty neat. So I mean, I know in the slide you see this thing that says uh, Project Management Professional PMP. It's kind of gold. That's not really the the uh, the seal, but that was just for the slide. But the seal, as you can see, is silver, and uh, and it's a it's a watermark. It's, you can see it's a very nice certificate. So it's great for you to display. And it's a good reminder that the hard work pays off. Uh, so, okay, so next slide. This is, uh, this is what we covered today. Uh, so, what is it? Application process, cost, studying for it, test day, and the day after. Uh, again, we have an hour and a half. We still have some. some you know, we still have some time, uh, but to talk about this process, I feel that you probably, you probably feel like you have gone through a movie really, really, really quick, and that's what I actually have done. Uh, just because it's a, it's a long process, but it's worth it. Uh, again, also if you had other questions, you know, you can send it uh, to through the DCS, and we'll answer those, and um, or send it to uh, Chief Select Walker, and, and we'll get an answer. Uh, for you, or is there any ideas you want I mentor to uh, to sponsor uh, or host later on? Also, you know, he's he's the chair for that. Okay, so I would like to open it for questions or any comments. Yes, Chief Miller, I think you mentioned after the initial certification is a three-year period, and you have to recert. Um, Correct. By taking the test, or you mentioned is it continuing education credits? Correct. How many? So. Uh, let me see, I think I had it in there. Uh, 39 credit, uh, educational credits. And these CEUs are all independently sought after, or does the EMI website recommend? Yeah, that, that is actually a very good question. So you want to take those credits with somebody who is, uh, who is certified by PMI, 
or in some cases if you have been taking college courses that cover some of that body of knowledge you can have those you can have the university send the transcripts to, or you know to PMI Institute and they'll give you credit for it but you have to you have to kind of be more specific in there but I know that uh, it's almost things like uh, if you're doing strategic uh, you know, strategic planning or if you're doing you know any kind of you know those things that have to do with that uh, risk management analysis so you know experience? then those will, will definitely count No, because I got mine uh, 2016, so I'm good till 25th April 2019. Yeah. So and and I tell you, I plan to take the credits. So I'm taking some college courses uh, that uh, they will cover that. I'm doing a doctoral uh, program, and so some of the uh, the courses got to do with this, and so I'm gonna transfer all of that to towards my certification, so that that helps. Um, I'm gonna say, yeah. Oh, okay. So don't wait till the last minute. So I, here's a mini war story. So I was, uh, I mean, Master Six Sigma black belt. That was a lot of work, and I paid a lot of money to get certified through the industry because I've done ISO 17025, uh, ISO 9000, and many of you, especially CE, and you know, deal with 9000 and. So I've done a lot of that. Quality systems, you know, over 17 years of experience, and I've also done consulting on, uh, you know, quality systems. So plenty of experience. So I went into Six Sigma. People think, you know, CPI is not leading Six Sigma. It's just really uh, about a statistical control. So you know, math. If you're not practicing that, you're gonna lose it. Anyways. Lots of work. It took me over a year to get, you know, a year and a half to get certified to that level, and uh, and that is with testimony and other stuff that I had to put in there. Lots, lots of work. So I was certified again, you know, and I was not paying attention. We obviously stand up for first time to see. We're doing all kinds of stuff, you know. We're trying to TDY. When I looked, I was like, oh, you know what? When I went, ah, oh, expired. Oh, good. I still could carry the Lean Six Sigma, but I cannot say certified anymore. Uh, you know, C L S S B because my license expired. So I was thinking of going back to doing that, but oof, that's going to be a lot of work. You go go through it. You have to review and, and uh, throw. But I got that through American Society for Quality. They do have some amazing certifications. They're tough, and that's what you want. And uh, I know the, uh, a lot of people in here will benefit from, like for example, you have to see what level you work on. Because uh, if you work in the trenches, you know, in, the, in a very tactical level, you probably want this type of certification. And you probably want to go, okay, so Six Sigma is probably okay if you deal with that. Or Lean, Lean is probably better. But if you're dealing, if you're more at a senior level, uh, in your case, you know, and some of the other ones that are here, probably want to go with something more like a certified manager of quality or organizational excellence we're looking at people at a more corporate or executive level so that's why when you're looking at certifications you got to look at those things not every certification is good you got to look at what level you're in and is that the level that you want to uh, work on in the future and uh, so that that's one way you can go about that so. all right any questions or questions on the line? Sorry, I don't know if you know this or not. I guess I've heard rumors. I'm going to be charging you for questions. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I feel like I've heard some. No, before good. I started focusing on this, I feel like I heard conversations people having about universities that opted for military uh, free training tracks. Do you know anything about that at all? I mean, no. no. No, I, I do not. But actually, uh, yes. Well, well not, not universities. Like, for example, uh, those people, if you are within a certain amount of time from retirement, uh, the uh, Veterans Administration, they have certain programs where you can, uh, you can get your PMP, you can get everything paid. Uh, you know, it's all free. And uh, the other thing is, you, I think you have to be within six months of retirement before you can get all that stuff for free. Syracuse University has a Veterans Transition Program. Okay, yes. And they put, take in donations from all their alumni, and then they will give you unlimited courses for free. 
and pay for your first certification of EMP included. Mm -hmm. You just have to be in the transition. Syracuse University. Yes. And I, I can send a link to the floor we want to. Yeah, absolutely. So send it to Senior uh, Master Sergeant Young or Master Sergeant Bonilla. They look like they're taking notes over there. Or they're, or, or they're just Googling, you know, or, or they're just like, hey, how are you? Hey, good to see you. How are the kids going? <laughs> how are the kids doing? So, uh, but yeah, then you have to be within six months. They have a good program. They have different other certifications too. Yeah, look at, look at what you do. What do you want to, you know, what, what do you want to see yourself two, three years? Five years too long, but two, three years. What, what do you enjoy? What are you doing here? You know, I, I, for me, this was great because it really helped me think through uh, processes and change things, going back on work that we've done. And, you know, okay, this is why this is not working. You know, we missed this or we could have used this, to, you know, can we, let's use this now. And, uh, so it's been a great, great road. Chief Harper, this is one of, um more highly covered, highly sought after certification, both um, in the military and in the civilian sector. Um, do you know, I mean, you're about to retire out of all what your employment opportunities are going to be uh, post act Live wonderer. Right. <laughs> and, <laughs> nah. and if that works, then that works. But I mean, do you know if there are like degrees of separation between anyone looking to apply for a certain job and, and then having this? on your resume that um, maybe earns you more money or gets you more opportunities in the civilian sector, or maybe anyone can test that. So I'm going to sound like an economist, right? You know, if you, everybody wants to have an economist that have one hand, but they don't exist, or well, maybe. But So on one hand, and on the other hand, right? So on one hand, if your job requirement is for you to be a project manager, then sure, this is going to earn you more money. But if you're going to, you know, play, and, you know, if you're going to be a basketball weaver, uh, you know, then, then this is not going to probably help you. Oh, well, I guess, you know, the project. I mean, these skills can you be applied to anything. But I think, uh, well, we have seen project managers, you know, statistically, uh, and you look in their uh, labor department stats, and so normally people who have PMP designation normally earn more. And those that do not, but you got to look at the industry, and you got to understand what is a requirement. If your if your future employer does not require you to be a project manager, if you get it, it's good on you. But they're not going to pay you more because you have a certification, and uh, and then you may have a certification, but this is not what they're looking for. You know what they're looking for is for a person who, for example, like I was just talking about, agile change manager, and maybe that's something they're looking somebody. You know, this is good, but. You know, how do they relate? I think that that's a, that is the question. I just want to offer uh, statistics uh, here, uh, similar to the question you just asked. Uh, last week, Lackland had a PDC course that was uh, we taught PMI. I missed it, so I was really happy that you did this. But the slides became available. And they offer a slide, the Alamo chapter of the PMI that we just talked about. They say there's currently 16.5 million PMs globally. They're saying by 2020, they're expected to be 15.7 million more projects. They say that there's only currently 660,000 current PMP certified individuals uh, by the PMI. So the, the, the message there that there's a huge need and that there's not as much of a, of a supply of PMP certified personnel and managers these perceived uh, projects that are going to continue to grow. Yeah, the industry, you got to see what is, you know, what the predictions are. I haven't been, you know, really looking at you know, what the industry, what industry is doing. I just do believe that this, for me, it, uh, it, it, it shows to anyone that, hey, I can do these things. I've been doing this for years. And I think that that is good. And, uh, you know, managing projects or managing programs, it's, it's, it's needed anywhere. So I think that for that, that's good. Uh, I want to, for example, for me, my passion is, you know, improving the organization, how do I do that? And so anything that helps me going that way, uh, you know, in a particular level, continuous improvement and all that stuff, this is, I can put all of this together. Mm -hmm. So you have to be able to do it. If you can't do it, then just don't get a certification. I mean, 
you spend the you spend if it's not what you need, you know, spend it better spend the time with the kids than spending you know your time studying this, chasing something, you chasing a ghost, you know. So just be clear what you want. You know, life is too short. You know, you just want to spend it with the people who care and you know and love you and, and that's what you want. You know, surround yourself with people that you know, just have the spark. You know, that's what you want to do. So this will do it for you. If it's not where you want to go, don't spend the time. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna end then. I don't see any questions on the line. Uh, just some statements. It says um, your resume becomes much more attractive to employers if you're looking for a job and having a certification can separate you from that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Very good point. Mm -hmm. Also says um, management programs say that generally half, only about half of the general project manager job position requires certification. However, have no fear. You think it can still set your resume apart from your competitors? So is our mic still working? I don't know. Can you check? I just uh, let's see. Is it working? What I want to say is that uh, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, Mr. Teal. Great comments. Can you hear me over there? No. It's not going to. You got to copy those. If you can. Uh, if you can thank them over the line, just let them know. And say, you know, uh, those are great comments. I demand for project management makes BMP certifications attractive. The other thing too is that uh, I'm always, and I was telling my wife this this morning, you know, is the buzzwords. Mm. You know, so that's why, uh, you know, don't go for it because it looks good, but does it complement your skills? You know, is it, you know, is this something that, you know, makes you're passionate about them, yes, go for it. The Anderson Economic Group predicts that 1.2 million project manager position will need to be filled each year to 2016. Yeah. That's a good vote. I mean, it just shows that there's uh, a long term benefit if you're looking to go that route. So it's like you invest the time, effort, and energy that the payoff can be here for you, you know, um, whether financially or to say if there's things that you're passionate about mm -hmm. you know, this can support that what I say is also my biggest uh, focus area is if when you embrace something like this embrace it because there's an opportunity for you to practice it here mm -hmm. and and, and, be, and the reason why that is important mm -hmm. is because when you practice that in here it will be yours Otherwise, you're gonna forget it, you know, because I was like, got it, and then, you know, I think us military, you know, Department of Defense, really military uh, service members, uh, civilians uh, in the service, I think we do pretty good because we're, you know, very disciplined, and, and, and so normally, you know, we eat these things and we use them, so I think we'll do good. But if <coughs> you don't use it, you're know, just gonna, you're just going to lose it. That's just happens with any gift you have, right? Power of you know to do many different things. If you don't use those gifts, you know they, they're will be taken from you. All right, so we'll pause in here, and thank you so much for being here, spending this hour and a half uh, with with us. Uh, thanks to our mentor for you know hosting uh, this event, and, and I'm pretty sure we'll have and I know. Uh, the uh, iMentor team had other other events coming up, so we look forward to, to those. So uh, uh, have an amazing day. Air Force IMC here at Joint Base San Antonio Headquarters. Out. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.